Hi, I am Rishabh Mure, PhD student in the School of Mechanical Engineering at Purdue University and this presentation I'll be talking about the effect, the influence, how, how the microscopic roughness influences the bulk rheological properties of dense suspensions. So, uh, about a couple of decades ago, particles were considered to be perfectly smooth for all the numerical and, and theoretical purposes. But if we look at the uh, AFM images of the surfaces for these particles, you can see there are these small bumps on their surfaces, which means the, the particles are not perfectly smooth. So the, the immediate consequence of this roughness is can be seen in the interaction of two spheres in, in a in a stoke flow so this roughness leads to asymmetry in the in the trajectories of two particles so that means since the roughness is influencing the pair interactions it would have some non intuitive uh, uh, effects on on the bulk properties of the suspension so uh, we can think that if by, by increasing roughness the the width of the lubrication film would increase between the particles and that would actually lead to reduction in hydrodynamic stresses and as a consequence the viscosity should decrease but that is not the case in, in uh, dense suspensions as it, it has it has been shown by Tanner and Dai in these experiments, they artificially roughened the particle using a grinding process, and and what and what they found that increasing the particle roughness actually increases the uh, suspension viscosity. So, to address uh, why this happens, uh, we can think about roughness. Uh, and and its consequences on on the particle so if we have roughness then we we expect the the particles to come into contact and contact between the particle lead to contact forces especially friction and and, and since friction is dependent on on the roughness size we we expect uh, we expect that roughness would influence the rheology so we so to answer why increasing roughness increases the suspension rheology we basically model the hydrodynamic interactions using the ball mineral approximation and and for the <coughs> for we rough, model the roughness as a hemispherical bump uh, on the particle surface and we split the normal forces into uh, we split the contact forces into no a normal force and a tangential force and <clears throat> we also incorporate friction and and by calculating the stress in the system we can also measure all the rheological properties such as shear stress relative viscosity and normal stress difference so <clears throat> for the friction uh, we use this uh, normal load dependent coefficient of friction which decreases with normal load uh, because this it has been observed that by using this friction law we can we can recover the shear thinning that is observed for uh, suspensions with intermediate uh, intermediate volume fractions so yeah so if it is it is well known that with increasing friction the viscosity increases so so, so if high roughness leads to a higher friction, then that means that would increase the suspension viscosity, and that is what we exactly observe. So this, this plot shows the average coefficient of friction between all the particles. As we as we increase the roughness, you can see the friction between the particles also increases, and because of this, the viscosity of the particles also increases as, as shown in this left plot and again we, sp we split the stress contribution into hydrodynamic 
uh, and and a contact uh, and the stress that is coming from contact interactions and and as we increase the roughness the hydrodynamic contribution is decreasing but but the increase in the contact contribution uh, is uh, is basically overcompensating this decrease and as a result the viscosity is increasing uh, another consequence of increasing roughness is that the jamming fraction at which the suspension stops flowing it also decreases as as, as tabulated in this in this plot so what will happen if we increase the roughness of particles in, in a dense suspension setting so since increasing roughness decreases the jamming fraction we expect if we expect the suspension to basically undergo shear thinning at, at an earlier shear rate as well as uh, at a at a earlier at a, at a low value for volume fraction and again this was observed in these nice experiments where the roughness was introduced artificially by attaching these nano particles on on the surface of the base particle and they basically observed that increasing the roughness leads to earlier shear thinning and as well as a switch in the sign of the first normal stress difference the same observations were made in another paper uh, again here yeah. so for this we basically we, we use a critical load model be because uh, it is used commonly in the literature to uh, recover the shear thickening behavior in suspensions so so the idea is basically that the tan the friction force will be zero if if the normal force between the particles is lower than a threshold value which is denoted by fcl and and the friction will be activated once this normal load becomes larger than the critical uh, the uh, la larger than the threshold value so uh, so what we observe that increasing the roughness uh, leads to a stronger uh, shear thickening jump uh, and and at low volume fractions it basically increases the magnitude of the shear thickening effect but at higher volume fractions as we increase the roughness it, it makes the suspensions to undergo uh, discontinuous shear thickening that means the viscosity jumps abruptly at a at a given uh, at at a critical shear rate and again with increasing roughness we we see that the uh, we see that the uh, critical shear rate that you've called for the shear thickening transition decreases uh, and also increasing roughness decreases the critical volume fraction above which we observe uh, discontinuous shear thickening so for one percent roughness we see that the critical volume fraction for dst is around 57 percent but for a for a five percent roughness it is it is significantly lower and and the suspension undergoes discontinuous shear thickening at only 53 percent we also observe the we are we also observe that the normal stress the first normal stress difference basically switches sign after the shear thickening transition as it was observed in the experiment and the second normal stress uh, is negative and it, it follows a the same uh, uh, behavior as as the stress in the system yeah, so to answer why roughness leads to earlier onset of shear thickening we look at the contact networks which are plotted for two different roughness values one low and one higher so so the lines here uh, indicate the contacts between the particles and, and the dots at the end of the lines are, be, are, are the particle centers and this color bar represents the magnitude of the normal force between the particles so uh, as you can see the the density of the contact networks increases drastically if we increase the roughness uh, and, and also the magnitude of the normal force between the particles increases and because of that there is a very high 
contact stress in the system at higher toughnesses and because of that we basically get a stronger jump in the viscosity as well as uh, a disc discontinuous shear thickening at, at lower volume fraction at higher roughnesses and finally we to basically quantify the effects of roughness uh, we come up with this uh, constitutive model so as you can see the viscous the rheological properties in the lower and, and a very high shear stress limit are basically independent of the stress values so we can we can model them uh, as a function of roughness and and only the volume fraction in both these limits which are indicated by zero and, and this infinity superscript and for the intermediate uh, stress values we can basically interpolate between these two extremes uh, to to predict the values of these properties in the intermediate uh, stress uh, region so to do this interpolation uh, we use this function f which is basically the fraction of <coughs> frictional contact at, at a given stress sigma uh, and if by plotting this fraction for all the simulation data we observe that this lies on a single curve uh, and and this this is what we use for interpolation yeah so these the slide shows the fitting constants uh, versus the roughness so the fitting constants for viscosity and and the second normal stress difference decrease as we increase the roughness similarly jamming fraction also decreases as we increase the roughness but since since we see this uh, switching in the sign of first normal stress difference the the fitting constant for for the first normal stress difference actually increases and it, it also switches sign as we increase the roughness and yeah the, finally this plot shows the uh, fit in the low low and basically high shear rate limits for for the viscosity yeah and if yeah so here we basically show the effectiveness of the constitutive model by plotting the simulation data with along with the model and one more thing to mention here is that if you look at this stay uh, stress versus shear rate state diagram we 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 observe basically three different uh, curves one is this monotonically increasing the other one is this s shaped curve uh, which which uh, indicates basically the onset of discontinuous shear thickening and the third one is this backward bending curve which which happens uh, for uh, for volume fractions very close to close to the jamming fraction uh, next is the model is also very effective in capturing uh, and quantifying the second normal stress difference and, and it also captures the uh, switching in the sign of the first normal stress difference as shown in this plot yeah so to summarize everything uh, we 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 have this phase diagram for shear stress versus volume fraction and as we increase the roughness this shows this shows the various regions where basically we have monotonically increasing curve then the uh, s shaped curve and the backward bending curve and as we basically increase the roughness the dst uh, tran the transition from cs cst to dst takes place at a lower volume fraction yeah, that's it thank you